This is going to be 35-2, and we're going to take a look at inverse functions, specifically for tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. And so we're going to evaluate those inverse functions. So just remember, as yet last time, it's how we imprint them. Right, we're taking that in the inverse, and so the inverse is going to make it, you know, go slanty. Uh, it's going to change the x and y's, right? You're swapping them, and so it's going to do that for all of my graphs. And so here's the important information for arc tangent and arc cotangent. So just know that that's the domain and range that we used. Now, one thing about it is we can switch arc tangent and arc cotangent between each other, and so that's something to kind of be aware of by flipping whatever the ratio that it's requesting here. And so by flipping them, we're going to be able to switch between the two if you want, if it's easier. Uh, the other thing to notice is the range here. It looks very similar to sine. The range here looks very similar to cosine. The difference though is we can't include those poles. And the reason being is on the unit circle at pi halves we know that this is going to be 0, 1. Well tangent sine over cosine 1 over 0 that's undefined which is why it's excluding the pi halves from that. And the same concept goes for the arc cotangent. So practicing a few here, the arc, to co the arc tangent of radical 3, I need to look at the unit circle and I need to determine where is my tangent going to be radical 3. Here it's going to be 1 over root 3, here it's going to be 1, and here it's going to be radical 3. And so from here to here, my value is going to be pi thirds. And so arc tangent of radical 3, we know it's going to equal pi thirds. Now we have to double check, is that between 0, or sorry, negative pi halves and pi halves? It is, and so therefore that can be my answer. Now cotangent of arc cotangent of negative 5, well those do cancel out. And so those canceling out, I'm going to get negative 5. And is that going to be in a suitable location between 0 and pi? And it could be somewhere here, which is why it's negative, and so it works. So negative 5 is going to be my answer. Now looking at a more abstract problem, I have the tangent of 2 arc tangent of x. Well, I can say that this is going to be t. And so then I really get the tangent of 2t. And so if t does equal arc tangent of x, then I can draw it out and say that this is going to be t and this is going to be opposite over adjacent because that has to do with the ratio. Well the tangent of 2t on the, as an identity is going to be 2 tangent t over 1 minus tangent squared t and so I just need to know what tangent t is from this and that's going to be just x. So plugging this back in I get 2x over 1 minus x squared and so now I'm going to find the domain on this. And so my domain uh, normally for tangent is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, but I can't divide by 0. And so I have to say 1 minus x squared cannot equal 0. Now when you solve for that, you're going to get x equals plus or minus 1, and it can't equal that. So that means on a number line, if I were to draw that out, can't equal that, can't equal that, but it can equal everything else. So that's going to be negative infinity to negative 1 union from negative 1 to 1 union from 1 to infinity. And that's going to be my answer. So practicing a few more, I have arc cotangent of negative root 3. And so examining that on the unit circle, I know that arc cotangent, which is going to be cosine over sine is going to be root 3 here, which means over here it should be negative root 3. And so that value is going to be 5 pi 6. Now that's going to be between 0 and pi, so that works. And then the sine of arc tangent. The nice thing about this is for sine, we know that that has to be in these quadrants here. For tangent, it also has to be in those quadrants there. Now it's negative, so I know that tangent's negative in this quadrant, and so that's going to be negative 3, and that's going to be 4, because it's opposite over adjacent. Now the reason why I made that value there negative is because it's going down, right? My y value is going down, and so that needs to be negative. Now if I use the Pythagorean theorem, that's going to be a 5. So finding the sine of that, 
that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, and so that's going to be negative 3 over 5, which is going to be my answer. Now examining secant and cosecant. Once again, my domains, something to pay attention to, and the ranges. Um, with my domain for secant and cosecant, it has to be everything from negative infinity to negative 1. So we just have to be aware of that as we go through that. Um, if you're wondering why, if you remember our graphs, right? when they looked like that, that was 1 and that was negative 1 as we were going through those. So just be aware of that, and it's for both of them. Um, they follow a the very similar range. Secant has a very similar range to that of you know, the cosine. The cosecant has the similar range to that of sine. But one thing that's really important is I can convert my cosecant into sine, and I can convert my secant into a cosine by flipping the ratios. And so sometimes that actually does help us in trying to solve these by switching them back into sine so that it's much easier for us to visualize it. And so on these here, arc secant of 2, well if I change that into sine, If I change this arc secant into cosine, so I get arc cosine, and that's going to become 1 half. Well, where is my cosine going to be 1 half? My cosine is 1 half at pi thirds on the unit circle. That's going to be between, whoops, it's this one. That's going to be between 0 and pi. It's not pi halves, so it works. Arc secant of secant, those do cancel out because they are inverses of each other, and so I do have 5 pi force, but 5 pi force is not on that domain there, and so because it's not on that domain, I do have to convert it, and so thinking about it, I know that there's 5 pi force. Where else is my secant or my cosine going to be negative? That's going to be here at 3 pi force, and so my I can't use 5 pi force. I have to use... 3 pi force is my answer. Now this concludes our lesson, and if you guys have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.